Rob Barnard to kill himself. I don't know, there's... <laughs> we say Rob Barnard. <laughs> <laughs> Life is the desert. Life is solitude. Death joins us to the great majority. There is life in the desert, and there's even more life up here in Panamint City. Panamint City is a paradox. Only its elevation sets it apart from the vast expanse of the Mojave Desert. To the east, on the other side of the steep walls of the Panamint mountain range, is Death Valley, the lowest point in North America, and probably the hottest weather on Earth. Not too far to the west is the highest mountain range in North America, the Sierra Nevadas, which harbors some of the cooler temperatures on the continent. Panamint City was known as the toughest, most lawless mining town around. It had a very short life of only three years, but in that time there were about 50 shootings. One of the legends floating around about this place is that a great flash flood carried away hundreds of the town's inhabitants in a huge wall of water. Well, it didn't wipe the road out, it wiped the whole town out. There's like 3,000 people up there. Well, I'm sorry to break it to you, but that simply isn't true. Most of Panamint City was washed away in 1901, but that was long after it was deserted. But imagine what it was like back then. At its height, circa 1875, there was around 2,000 inhabitants, mostly men, who were living up here. The smokestack behind me was wafting smoke continuously. The thumping sound of stamps from the mill reverberated throughout the air. The few women who resided here wore bustles and tilted hats, and they teetered up and down the parade in high heeled boots. A burst of laughter came from one of the saloons, and the dirty, dirty houses were alive with music, dancing, and perhaps much more intimate activity. Before the end of 1874, 700 people had found a new home in Panamint City. Many of these people were pretty rough characters and were a little trigger happy. The butcher's two-wheeled cart carried 57 corpses to the nearby Sourdough Gulch. Years later, the drunken prospectors and former Panamint miners could be heard singing and slurring in the town of Ballarat. And they sang, her picks are rust, her bones are dust, it's 40 years since she went bust. They were singing about Panamint City. Dustin's boots fell apart on the hike up, and he decided to stay at the Hilton and repair them. While we were gone, Dustin repairs other stuff too. More on that later. I took off with the bug guys in search of new and interesting creatures. Our first stop, however, was the pictographs. They are fairly recent but are the largest collection of Koso-style pictographs in the region. I say they're recent because the pictographs depict bulls and horses, all of which were introduced by Europeans. It's quite likely that these pictographs were drawn shortly before the founding of Panamint City. The, uh, you know, a small family of the original Shoshone Indians that live in this area. And, um, they own some property over here they call the Indian Ranch, just right up the road here, about 12, 10 miles, I'd say. They say that the Shoshones has lived in this area for 10,000 years. 10,000 years these people have lived here. And, uh, yeah, one time, Death Valley, that park over there, you know, the Indians was living there for 10,000 years, and the park was trying to run the Indians out. At the time, you know, I kind of like to get into it once in a while with these politicians, so I wrote state senator, and, you know, and I wrote him and told him about what I thought about it, you know. I said, hey, these Indians, this is their home. They've lived here for 10,000 years. They've been here a hell of a lot longer than that Death Valley Park has ever been heard of. 
leave them alone. And the guy wrote me back a letter and said, you know, I agree with you. We start off thinking that we can hike all the way over to Panamint Pass. On the map it looks really easy, but in real life, not so much. Instead, we explore the canyon's forest, stopping frequently because of the thin air and then getting up to hike a little more. But we do stumble across a weather station. This weather station's data can be found at the address below. All right, what we got here is we have uh, Sudacris regilla, or the Pacific tree frog. And uh, if you look right here, uh, there's like three color phases that we found. There's probably more, you never know. Um, these, from what I know, are the only frogs that make the ribbit sound. So when they make their sound, it actually sounds like ribbit, ribbit. Any other frog or toad does not make that sound. So this little frog right here is responsible for what we know as Ribbit Ribbit. Sudacris Regilla, Pacific Tree Frog. On the way back, we stopped by the lower Wyoming the mine. Marty confessed that he is claustrophobic in tunnels like this, and said there's a good chance that he might not go all the way in with us. Okay, right now we are walking down the lower Wyoming mine. And I think this is one of the ones that Rock Novak was working in. So it's kind of a nostalgic feeling because you know, just yesterday we met we met someone that had been working up here and now this is his workplace. In the depths of the mind, we dabble in clinical psychology, deciding to try to make it back out without lights. We bump our heads, stumble, and talk a lot to know how far we are from each other. Marty later said his experience in total darkness had therapeutic value. He's He's gonna Alright, what we got right here is uh, Lapropeltis jatula, otherwise known as the California Mountain King Snake. And this is the black and white version. Uh, there's, there's two versions, there's this one and the coastal version, which is brown and yellowish and I've never seen one of these in a while before so I'm pretty excited California king snake uh, what these snakes are known for is eating other snakes I guess that's why they call them king snakes and they'll eat any other snake from uh, garter snakes to even rattlesnakes upon arriving at the Panamint Hilton we find Donovan still passed out and Dustin with a proud smirk on his face <laughs> Alright, this guy right here fixed some of the plumbing at the Panamint Hilton. The kitchen sink. How'd you do it? I put the new faucet in that was in the cupboard. And I'm never coming back. <laughs> this, never. Is, this is parting gift. Yeah. Yeah, right, next year, this time. Fuck you. You'll be up here <laughs> saying, I'm never coming back. After exploring the Panamint Hilton, we find what is called the Vagina Rock. For two trips, Jason Harling, also known as The Oracle, has not been man enough to join us, Team Bravo, on our expeditions. This rock is deemed the Vagina Rock, in honor of the Oracle. So please leave this rock and note in place until he himself is man enough to take it down. Thank you. Team Bravo. Oracle. Get the f up to Panama City and get your goddamn rock. Andrew Perry, let's try and keep it reasonable.